Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel Learn with Gigs. I am starting this channel just for you all because I see the demand for Power BI developers in the market is increasing day by day and there are very few videos on YouTube from which you can really analyze your preparation before the interview. I myself have faced this problem so I know the importance or the need of the video series from which we can actually prepare and test ourselves. I have given a lot of interviews and also have taken numerous interviews for this Power BI developer position. So I thought of creating a video series for you all through which you can learn and have an upper edge. Trust me, you will have an upper edge for other candidates while giving the interview. So let's start the video without wasting any time. So today we will be focusing on Power Query question and answers. Whatever questions are asked on this topic, we will cover all those questions. First question is, what is the difference between append and merge? So append. Append is when you have additional rows of data that you would like to add to an existing query. You append that query. Append means union, union of two tables. And to have append, the structure of both the queries or tables should be identical. Structure means the number of columns, the name of the columns and their data types. All should be identical. Then only we can append the two queries. Now what is merge? Merge is basically combined combination of two tables on the basis of some common column names or values you can say so whenever we want to have one or more columns that you would like to add to an another query we merge the query interviewer you can ask to you like what are the different types of merges available in a power query so you have to answer there are six types of merge options available left outer inner right outer full outer left entity and right entity so the next question is what is query folding Query folding is basically the conversion of M language to the native language of the source, whichever source which we are using and the transformations are happening on the source side itself directly instead of on our local machine. So as a result, the performance of our model increases. So you have to mention this definition and you have to, do, you have to tell this definition to the interviewer. Then only he will be clear that yes, you know what is query folding. And I would like to add one thing that not all the sources all the data sources uh, allow this query folding functionality. We have few of these like relational databases like SQL Server, SAP HANA database, Oracle databases. All these databases which are relational allow this query folding functionality. So if you mention this point also, then it will be very fruitful for you. Let's move to the third question. What is the difference between copying and referencing a table? Copying a table means you are creating an exact copy of your existing, existing table with all the applied steps, if any, and both the tables are independent of each other. That means if you do any kind of transformation on the first table, it will not reflect on the second table. Similarly, if you do any kind of transformations on the second table, it will not reflect on the first table. So that is copying a table. Then the referencing a table means you are again creating an exact copy of the existing table but referencing means it will be dependent on the original table. So if you do any kind of modifications like adding or removing of columns on the original table, those transformations will be automatically reflected on the reference table. So in this way you can clarify, you can categorize copying a table and referencing a table to the interviewer. Let's move to the third question. What is M query or code? So M stands for mashup, mashup language, as Power Query is all about connecting to various data sources and mashing them up. So M code is the language behind the scenes of Power Query. So whenever we do any kind of transformations, corresponding M code is written for it, which we can easily view in advanced editor. It's a functional case sensitive language. So in this way, you can answer this question to the interviewer. So let's move to the next question. So this is a very basic question that, that is being asked in the interviews, but many of us fail to answer it because we don't really focus on these type of problems. So the question is, suppose you have a column with formation as 20210819, which is with, which has a data type as whole number. So as you can see, this is a, the, the number that is represented is a date value. So if you want to convert it into the date column, what things we have to do to achieve it? So the first thing that you have to do is to select that column and change its data type to text. And then after changing it to text, select that column again and choose the date as its data type. In this way, you can convert 
and a column with whole number as its data type to a column with date as its data type. Let's move ahead. What are parameters and provide few of its use cases? So you have to answer like what are parameters first? So parameters are the ways to pass values to other queries. In this way you can answer this and then they ask like what are some of their few use cases? So you can answer any of the two I have mentioned here too, which also you can mention. So the first use case is that we can do dynamic filtering of tables or queries on the basis of parameters defined if any. So if you want to do filtration, dynamic filtration of the of our fact tables or of our different dim dimension tables, we can do by defining a parameter and then changing it accordingly. The second use case is we can parameterize our connection string of a database so that in future if you have to deploy our model from dev environment to test or from test to prod, we can easily do that by changing just the connection string defined in a parameter. So in this way we can answer this question. So let's move to the last question on this topic power query. What is incremental refresh? So many of us have heard about this term incremental refresh, but we try to ignore it. We think of that this question can't be asked in an interview, but yes, this question is being asked in many of the interviews. So you should consider this, this question as important. So how to answer this incremental refresh question? So you can say when we have a huge model with billions of rows, then it's become very difficult to manage the performance of the model. So for that, if we somehow manage to refresh the part of data which is getting updated frequently, then we could control our data model. This is where incremental refresh becomes handy. To configure incremental refresh, we first have to define two predefined case sensitive parameters like range start and range end. So these, these are the two parameters, predefined parameters that we have to use just like this. And then after configuring this, we can have our data to like if whatever data we want to refresh, we can configure that like, like, like if you want to refresh the last five years or the last 10 days or the last 30 days, we can configure that range also. Developers should keep this in mind that once this report that is finally developed is published to the Power BI service, we can't download it further unlike the other reports. So we have to store this report based on incremental refresh properly by a developer. So this was the last question on this topic. Thank you for watching the whole video. I hope you were able to learn through this video. So please hit the like button. It would motivate me to prepare more videos for you. Do comment down any for any queries. I would love to answer it. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you get to know whenever I am uploading the new video. Thanks for watching.